Hello everyone, it's great seeing you again and thanks for joining us for Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on the 11th day of January 2021. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show once again. Up first on the hazardous weather graphic, uh, start up there on the north on the Arctic coast. Winter weather advisories are due to come out there or will come out uh, for the uh, central and eastern Arctic coast at 9 p.m. this evening and will remain out through the remainder of tonight, through tomorrow, through tomorrow night until 9 a.m. on Wednesday. And that's for uh, winds to increase uh, with gusts of 50 miles an hour and uh, that'll create uh, blowing snow. It could be a little bit of new snowfall, but not a lot, but there'll be enough to uh, create um, visibilities down to a half mile or less at times and blowing snow, uh, reduce visibilities. Uh, again, at times in areas up there, in the uh, yellow shaded areas uh, from the central coast eastward to the border. And then down uh, in the Bering Strait there, Bering Strait coast, St. Lawrence Island, still under the influence of a blizzard warning, especially for the Bering Strait coast, uh, that's out until uh, tomorrow. That's out for tonight uh, into tomorrow and uh, I believe 6 a.m. tomorrow. And that's for the uh, winds gusting 50 to as high as 70 miles an hour and snow and blowing snow, reducing visibility down to, uh, well, down to whiteout conditions at times, definitely under a quarter mile at times. And that's for uh, tonight into possibly early tomorrow. And then for the uh, Pribilof Islands, winter weather advisory out uh, there, as well as the Fox Islands. And that's out uh, until 6 a.m. Tuesday morning with, uh, again, gusty winds, 35 to 50 miles an hour. And that creating some blowing snow conditions their temperatures uh, in the mid 20s there for the Pribilof Islands, so definitely cold enough for the blowing snow. Kind of on the edge there on Alaska, the Nikolski, temperatures uh, near or just below or just above freezing, kind of oscillating a little bit there around freezing, which makes it tougher to have a lot of uh, blowing snow that would really reduce the visibilities. But uh, it might drop a little colder tonight, and that would uh, do the trick to uh, reduce visibilities down to a half mile in the gusty winds. And the Alaska Peninsula there, winter weather advisory out until 6 p.m. this evening, so just a few hours more. And for the same conditions, uh, gusty wind, snow blowing snow, expected to uh, improve though here currently and into by early this evening, uh, either again due to end at 6 p.m. or, you know, they'll kick it out longer. So right now it's due to end at 6 p.m. this evening. That's it for the uh, watches, warnings, advisories around the state today on satellite. Low pressure, uh, well, kind of a big cyclonic circulation there from Bristol Bay, Southeast Bering Sea, eastward to uh, just east of Kodiak Island. And the uh, west side there, again, pulling cold air southward, the northerly winds, really howling through the Bering Strait. Uh, Tin City gusts 70 miles an hour today and near whiteout conditions, temperature oscillating between uh, just either near zero or a little below. And uh, gusty winds down to St. Lawrence Island, 40, 50 miles an hour there. Not quite as bad conditions at Gamble and Savunga as they have up at Tin City. Uh, but the uh, winds extending all the way down to the Pribilof Islands where uh, winds gust at St. George, for example, uh, peaked out at about 50 miles an hour today. And their visibility is down to a quarter mile to a half mile in moderate snow at times and blowing snow. And then you can see that sweeps on down into the uh, Fox Islands and catching the Western Alaska Peninsula there with uh, the gusty winds. Nikolski gusts 55 miles per hour, temperature about 33 degrees there. Akun Island gusts 55 miles an hour and temperature just under freezing. And then uh, about 30 degrees or so or upper 20s as you head eastward there on the Alaska Peninsula. Otherwise, uh, low pressure and uh, periods of rain or showers there brought about four tenths of an inch or around half an inch to Kodiak Island. And on the chart, again, uh, whoop, there we go. You can see uh, that low, actually the main low center, there's actually several smaller circulations uh, in the, embedded in the overall general cyclonic flow, as I mentioned there. 
centered at the surface just south of the Alaska Peninsula. And that continues to pull moisture northward out of the Northeast Pacific into the Panhandle and uh, back into the North Gulf Coast and Kodiak Island. Nothing uh, really heavy. Yakutat had about uh, nearly an inch of precipitation the last 12 hours ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon. And uh, mounts along the uh, Panhandle range or along the North Gulf Coast range from about third of an inch, Cordova, Seldovia had about two tenths of an inch there, as well as Port Graham, even lighter amounts so at Homer. And uh, some of that fell as wet snow in the Seward area, but mostly rain and not much in the way of snow accumulations there. Probably higher uh, accumulations, you get higher elevation up toward uh, the pass. But uh, the southeast coast, uh, kind of breezy winds, uh, anywhere from 20 gusts, 35, maybe 40 miles an hour in the windier areas along the coast, uh, across the entire stretch of the area there. And the next system down to the south of the Queen Charlotte's uh, already increasing the wind and rain across the Queen Charlotte's, the wind gusting 40 to 50 miles an hour, that uh, working into Dixon entrance now, and that'll continue to work northward uh, tonight. Otherwise, out over the Bering Sea, northerly flow right out of the Arctic, southward to the Aleutians and a little beyond there, with the uh, snow and blowing snow from the Bering Strait all the way down to the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, western Alaska Peninsula. For tonight, uh, that low doesn't move much, slowly weakens, so the pattern doesn't change much at all, except for another that next system develops and moves northward for gale force winds and increasing precipitation amounts uh, intensity-wise in the form of rain, lower elevations, snow, of course, higher elevations, and lighter amounts up to the north. Uh, it's going to hit the south coast first from Dixon entrance southern inside waters. Otherwise, not much change for the north Gulf Coast. Still uh, southeast flow and periods of light rain or snow showers, nothing heavy. Bering Sea, uh, windy, cold snow showers, pretty widespread across the area there. Gradually improving, though, continuing to improve the Alaska Peninsula and eventually for the Pribilofs and Eastern Aleutians as well as St. Lawrence Island. But blizzard warning out tonight, as I mentioned, for St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait Coast, uh, at least through tonight, areas of snow up there with uh, increasing winds, tightening gradient on the Arctic coast. That's uh, what's uh, uh, responsible for the winter weather advisories of the central and eastern coast. And then conditions improve out over the western Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Tomorrow, Tuesday, still persistent low pressure west of uh, Kodiak there, uh, continuing to weaken as a result the uh, flow around it weakening, especially across the Gulf. So the moisture will become lighter, winds lighter, and won't be that significant and won't that stretch that far inland. What it does will be very light. So inland areas there, southern Alaska, those snow showers, maybe just flurries and kind of on the, of a scattered nature. It stays unsettled for the panhandle, but again, winds not, the system moves through, really troughs out. You can see it moves up by tomorrow afternoon. It's uh, jumped into Western Canada and weakens. And we got snow showers from the Seward Peninsula all the way up across the, uh, let's see, Kobuk, Koyukov Valley, Brooks Range, North Slope, and again, areas of blowing snow. Even over the uh, Brooks Range, could see some blowing snow through the passes with uh, gusty northeast winds. And along the Arctic coast, eastern and central coast, b windy on the west side there. You could see uh, pretty gusty winds again there, even up to 35 to 50 miles an hour, but uh, drier offshore flow, so you have no advisory there. And for the outlook on Wednesday, improvement uh, looks pretty dramatic there for the Arctic coast, especially the central coast with clearing skies, lightning winds, and uh, temperatures will begin to fall as well, uh, slow, just due to the uh, clearing skies and the lighter winds. Otherwise, uh, looks like uh, North Slope or mainly into the Brooks Range areas of snow. Again, Western Brooks Range along mountains to say Cape Lisbon, Point Hope, maybe Hoyt Lay, could see some blowing snow with possible winds 30 to 50 miles an hour. Central interior, dry, variable clouds, and then a widespread area of uh, snow or snow showers or mixed rain and snow showers, especially along the coastline there, Kodiak Island, North Gulf Coast, mixed precipitation, just flat out rain right there at sea level along the outer coastline, but uh, nothing heavy as a, just a very weak southerly flow. Now that low, you know, is 998 millibars drifts off to the northwest. Not much out over the Bering Sea at all in the way of storminess, just a lot of leftover snow showers and chilly air. And uh, southeast coast, uh, showery with uh, lighter precipitation amounts and a real weak trough off the coast there, keeping it kind of unsettled. Lows tonight, uh, 30s to lower 40s, uh, still above freezing with the Panhandle, continued subtly flow near freezing Kodiak Island. Teens, Susitna Valley, Northern Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, 15 to 25, a little below zero, Copper River Basin, 20s, Bristol Bay. Teens for the Pribilofs, below zero, St. Lawrence Island, North Slope, and Arctic Coast. And uh, either side of zero, 
zero five below to five above central eastern interior highs tomorrow single numbers for the fairbanks area as well as the upper yukon valley and uh, near zero for the alaska or for the brooks range and a little below zero for the north slope in the arctic coast otherwise lower 30s alaska peninsula and the aleutians mid-20s per loss near 40 for kodiak 30s with two lower 40s for the panhandle <clears throat> and for wednesday morning lows uh Low cooler to sit in the valley, down say uh, zero to 10 and 15 to 20 for South Central Alaska, to upper 20s along the outer coastline. And a little cooler for the Panel is still above freezing for the most part, except uh, for Lynn Canal towards Skagway and Haines, maybe upper 20s, lower 20s for the Aleutians, lower to mid 20s for the Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula. And a little below zero there for the Tanah Valley, zero to five, high single numbers there and shade below zero for the Arctic coast and 20 Southern Alaska. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic, Tuesday morning, IFR Central Arctic Coast, and then some IFR Central Brooks Range southward and eastward there in across the uh, upper Yukon Valley, Yukon Flats, down to about the Yukon River, and uh, northern Koyukuk Valley, marginal VFR, right on down uh, to the southwest into Norton Sound, uh, most of the Seward Peninsula, and eastern St. Lawrence Island, then some more IF IFR there, Cape Vermont's off down across uh, Nunavik Island, Pribilofs, and uh, Southeast Bering Sea extending eastward there across Bristol Bay and across the Aleutian Range, Shelikov Strait, Kodiak Island, Fognac Island, Kamishak Bay, all IFR, and marginal for the Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Northern Cook Inlet, Manuska, Susitna Valley, VFR, IFR, Prince William Sound, IFR there along and off the southeast coast, not too bad out west, uh, Extensive uh, marginal VFR in most areas from, say, ADAC out to Shimia. And then for the afternoon, marginal VFR, Bering Sea, Aleutians for the most part. With the IFR, Eastern Bering Sea, just north or along the north shores of Unmak and Unalaska Island. And then up across the Pribilof, St. Lawrence Island, uh, just clipping the east side there. A narrow band in, say, between Nome and uh, Elam or White Mountain, Golovin, possible IFR up across Kobuk Selawak Valley into the North Slope and Central Arctic Coast. And then areas of VFR with scattered areas of marginal VFR for Southern Alaska, Eastern Interior. IFR, a small band there, Northern Prince William Sound along the coast range, uh, just north of Yakutat and some IFR for the Southeast Coast. And then for the uh, Wednesday morning forecast, uh, Central Arctic Coast, IFR, otherwise marginal for the North Slope with some VFR there over toward the Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast. IFR, Eastern Brooks Range, patch of IFR there over the Cuscombe Valley uh, and the Cuscombe Mountain areas, and also uh, more widespread IFR. Kamishak Bay, Shelikoff Strait, westward across the Aleutian Range, Bristol Bay, Togiak Bay, Cape Newnham, St. Paul, St. George, northward to St. Lawrence Island, and uh, marginal for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, and most of the Alaska Peninsula, as well as the Gulf of Alaska, Prince William Sound, and that area extends northward there across the uh, western Copper River Basin, Talkeetan is right on up into the uh, greater Fairbanks area. Southeast coast, though, VFR. Afternoon forecast, marginal VFR for the Panhandle, uh, coming down from your VFR to start the day with, with uh, maybe some IFR over toward Hyder and Stewart. IFR also possible Yakutat, Southern Alaska, mostly marginal VFR right on down across the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, Kodiak Island, Fognac Island, VFR, VFR for the Southwest Coast and Nunavik Island, Eastern St. Lawrence Island, otherwise marginal for the Bering Sea and the Aleutians, exception uh, Shimia 2 in the VFR area. IFR, Central Arctic Coast, a good chunk of the Central North Slope, and then eastward to say uh, Prudhoe Bay or so. And for passes, Anatovic, marginal. Adigan, split the difference there, go IFR for Adigan, as conditions probably be a little lower off to the east. And Lake Clark and Merrill, occasionally marginal tomorrow, marginal VFR at the start, becoming VFR for rainy. And windy, marginal VFR, Isabel, marginal. Mentasta, VFR looking good there, and Tanita, possible marginal VFR again, eastern entrance, uh, not guaranteed though, otherwise VFR, Portage, lowest conditions once again on the eastern approach, could be IFR, Chilkoot and White, marginal VFR, and the freezing levels uh, at the surface, right along the Aleutians, up along the Alaska Peninsula, hugging the North Gulf Coast and cutting across the northern panel, 2,000 feet down over Dixon entrance, icing, could be some uh, Scattered areas are considerable moderate with the continued moisture flow that's slowly weakening as it uh, continues into the southeast coast and then wrapping back west-northwest there 
clipping Kodiak Island, and then some icing potential from uh, St. Lawrence Island down across the, the Perbloffs to the Eastern Aleutians. Mostly be uh, very isolated, moderate if that, just kind of an elevated area there. Could be some icing. Same thing for the western central Aleutian areas, otherwise the interior. Up to the Arctic coast, uh, no problems icing-wise. And for the jet stream, uh, flow continuing to weaken and the main stronger jet well to the south of the area there. So, uh, but still uh, onshore flow from the south-southeast coming into the uh, North Gulf Coast and Panhandle and 9,000 feet, about 55 knots there over the northern Panhandle, northwest 40 to 50, back over the central Aleutians and uh, otherwise light winds uh, comparatively over the remainder of the forecast area. And for 3,000 feet, uh, northerlies, 45 knots to St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait, uh, lighter winds though, but still a little breezy for the Alaska Peninsula. And turbulence wise, occasional moderate chop for the Panhandle and uh, Iliamna Lake, Fognac Island, all the Aleutians, St. Lawrence Island. What we're looking at is a legacy of the Ice Age. Permafrost and methane is a time machine. So what we're going to do is walk back in time. We're going to see old carbon, old bones, old environments, and none of those are in equilibrium with today's climate, so that's the problem. That world doesn't exist anymore, and it hasn't for 10,000 years. It was nicely and very delicately separated from this modern, warmer climate by about this much moss. And when that moss goes away, whether for fire, or for human disturbance, or for warming, then all hell breaks loose. Permafrost. It's maybe the part of the cryosphere that's most out of sight, and mind. It's fascinating how it formed in the first place, and how it got loaded with so much carbon. In a minute, we'll go back underground with Matthew Sturm, from the University of Alaska Fairbanks. But first, let's meet Peter Griffith, NASA's project manager for the Above Campaign, which supports more than 70 science projects studying forest and tundra vegetation, wildfires, animals like birds, caribou, and doll sheep, methane emissions from expanding northern lakes, and the impacts of climate change on people in Alaska, Canada, and around the world. Many of those projects have some direct connection to permafrost. Permafrost is the hidden cryosphere. It's the permanently frozen soil that surrounds the Arctic all across Alaska, northern Canada, and then across Eurasia. The ground has been frozen during the Ice Ages. During the Ice Ages, there was not enough snowfall in the drier regions of Alaska and Canada to form glaciers there, so the land was suitable for vegetation. What happened is that over thousands and thousands of years, all of that plant material got compacted and frozen every winter and buried and pushed down. So that today there's 300 feet deep of frozen water and dead plants and some pieces of dead animals too. Sometimes you find you know, woolly mammoths <laughs> in the permafrost. But most of it, of the organic matter as we call it in the permafrost, is um, frozen plant material. Some of that plant material is now thawing and decaying, releasing its ancient carbon into the atmosphere, sometimes in the form of methane gas bubbling out of expanding northern lakes. We started this fuel campaign uh, because the Arctic is the part of the planet that is warming first and fastest. And there are consequences to this for permafrost. So during the Arctic Boreal Vulnerability Experiment, we're studying permafrost with people on the ground, from aircraft flying over the region, and also from satellites in space. Another way to understand the permafrost is to take a walk below ground with Matthew Sturm and into the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers permafrost tunnel. And they've dug this, this tunnel back into the side of a hill about 200 feet, and it goes 
sort of sloping down so that by the end of the tunnel you're about 100 feet underground and you're surrounded by bones sticking out of the wall from the steppe bison and the uh, mastodons that are frozen in it. There's sticks that are 40,000 years old, you know, that you can touch with your hand. There's grass that's still green that's tens of thousands of years old because it got frozen, you know, right away and it's never lost the, the, the green color. But as fascinating as it is to see these relics of an ancient era, or to see a tree split in half by thawing soil, or even to light a ball of methane on fire from under winter ice, at the end of the day, Peter and his colleagues want to know just how much organic matter is frozen in that permafrost, and how fast it might be released. Currently, we, we think that there is something on the order of two to three times as much carbon locked up as frozen organic matter in permafrost as there is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So releasing all of that organic carbon from permafrost into the atmosphere would be a real game changer. That would be a tremendous transformation of the planet's atmosphere. Now, the good news is that it would take a very, very long time for that to happen. However, we are warming the planet uh, at a rate now that calls into question how quickly is that uh, changing and what the consequences uh, in the near future and in the far future are going to be. You're in the middle of a field somewhere in California at four in the morning. It's sort of surreal in a way because you've put so much time into it for so long and, and actually seeing it over there is like, <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, it's a big deal. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Hi everyone, meteorologist Joel Curtis with your marine weather. Starting out with the sea ice edge, the, the main comment is, is that we've had north flow and it's going to hang in there for the next week or so. So the uh, ice forecasters are expecting that the, that the uh, edge in the Bering Sea is going to move southward 30 to 50 miles over the next five days. So starting out with the Panham for Tuesday, got some mixed uh, 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 wind going on here. Uh, a lot of onshore flow, uh, up to 50 knots off of southern Baranoff Island with a uh, gust of 65 and seas a whopping 30 feet. On the inside waters, a lot of southeasterlies, 25 to 30 knots, some gusts to 45 and seas up to 10 feet. On Wednesday, things really back off. On the outside waters, 20 all the way up to 35 knots as you get down off of Prince of Wales Island. And then southeasterlies, 15 to 25 knots on the inside, seas up to 5 feet. Off of south central for the outside waters, starting out fairly light, 15 to 25 knots, seas up to 14 feet. Prince William Sound, easterlies 15, seas 3 feet. And then Cook Inlet has got some uh, northeasterlies going, 20 to 30 knots, and seas 11 feet. On Wednesday, it's still uh, a fairly light to what we've been seeing lately, uh, 20 to 25 knots on the outside and Prince William Sound, and northeasterlies 10 to 20 knots in Cook Inlet and seas up to six feet there. Along the Alaska Peninsula, you see that circulation around the low, uh, winds ranging 20 to 30 knots, seas on the Pacific side up to 12 feet, and on the Bering side up to 10 feet. And then on Wednesday, you get a lot of southwesterlies going on here, but roughly uh, 20 to 25 knots, seas up to 10 feet on the Pacific side and uh, up to 8 feet on the Bering Sea side. For the Aleutians, a lot of 30 knots uh, seen in the forecast. The uh, northwesterlies, uh, seas up to 14 feet on the Bering side and up to 13 feet on the Pacific side. And then for the Aleutian chain, again on Wednesday, uh, 15 to 25 knots, seas up to 11 feet on the Bering side, and if you get out toward Chimia, up to 14 feet, and then on Pacific side up to 10 feet. 
Along the west coast, northerlies, over mostly ice-covered areas, uh, 15 all the way up to 30 knots, and seas 11 feet as you get south of St. Matthew and the Pribloffs. And then the northerlies persist, uh, all 10 and then ranging up to 25 knots as you get down near St. Paul, and seas 9 feet in nice free waters. And along the Arctic coast, uh, pretty windy, uh, 30 to 35 knots out of the northeast and, and north, uh, coming down through the Bering Strait. And then uh, on Wednesday, we've got uh, uh, 25 all the way up to 40 knots uh, for Cape Lisburn, and then it backs off to 20 knots as you get down toward the Bering Strait. So recapping tonight's weather, we've got our old low uh, south of Shilikov Strait, uh, 968 millibars, one out in the Bering Sea, 999. Uh, some onshore flow, a pretty strong low coming up to the panel at 963 millibars, and uh, lots of precipitation going on with the onshore flow and snow showers over the Bering. Then as we get on to Tuesday's weather, uh, those fronts have all weakened out. Uh, the uh, low near Shilikov Strait has filled to 974 millibars. Quite a lot of shower activity around the state. Only the mid, uh, middle part of the state is spared. And we see that uh, 1,000 millibar low still drifting around in the Bering Sea out there with a lot of snow showers going on. And pretty good pressure gradient along the North Slope. And then on Wednesday, uh, we've got a couple of new systems approaching both the Gulf and the Bering Sea well to the south, but some weakening troughs and the low pressure systems have weakened quite a bit. Uh, still some onshore flow, uh, lots of snow showers as you get further wet, and then uh, along the panhandle showers and snow showers in the mountains. Well, that's all the time we have. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we appreciate uh, uh, your feedback whenever you can give it to the forecast offices. Thanks again and have a good night. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.